Welcome everybody at another episode of the Wrestling vs. the World podcast. If you are enjoying your day, sweet. If not, whatever. <laughs> so, one of the common things that I have heard so many times throughout social media within fans when they discuss, like, the worst WrestleMania of all time, a lot of them keep going back to 27, saying it's the worst WrestleMania ever for their own reasons. For me, I have to disagree. Is it good? Not really. It's one of those in-the-middle WrestleManias, but I've already given my list on a past episode of the podcast, my top five worst, and of course, 27 was not on there because I found ones that are worse than that. But I'm going to go over WrestleMania 27. I'm not going to go into the biggest details. But I'm going to compare this a lot to WrestleMania 11, which I still honestly believe is the worst WrestleMania of all time. So I'm going to give the it's compar- the comparisons there just as a kind of an argument saying, hey, at least it's not as bad as WrestleMania 11. So the difference going to be right off the bat, at least between the two shows, is eight or 27 has one more WrestleMania match than WrestleMania 11. 11 had 7, this had 8. So, opening contest for 27, Edge retained the World Heavyweight Championship against Alberto Del Rio. Pretty solid match. That's a really solid overall match. Edge retaining the World Heavyweight Championship after Alberto Del Rio got a title shot from winning the 40-man Royal Rumble match. And this would actually be Edge's final televised match. I think there have been some misconceptions saying it was his last match ever. Technically, he was part of a dark match for a tag team match on an episode of SmackDown not too long after this. So, to say it was his last match is factually incorrect, but at least saying his final televised match at that point before retiring would be true. And then afterwards, he would destroy the car with Christian and everything that Del Rio took onto the stage. And this was a far better opener than 11 when you had that sloppy, pointless tag match of the Allied Powers versus the Blue Brothers. It's a mean far better opener there. Now the second match, 27, Cody Rhodes and Rey Mysterio going over the fact that Rey Mysterio Broke Cody Rhodes' nose, whether it be real or not, I don't think it's ever been fully clarified. But because of that, dashing Cody Rhodes became undashing, clear mask. He's ashamed of how he looks, so they have the big match there. And this was also another solid match. Not as good as the opener, but still overall, down the middle, solid. Like a 3 out of 5. Uh, now you go to the next match. This is one where I think a lot of people bring up saying it was pointless. Big Show King, St. Humorel, and Kofi Kingston, originally supposed to be Vladimir Kozlov, against all four members of the core, a man tag match, lasted a minute and a half where the core got squashed. Was it a stupid decision? Yes, but then again, the core was never taken seriously in the first place because it was the Nexus on like a whole light remixture there. It's like, take the Nexus, mix the ingredients to where it tastes like shit, there, you got the core. I mean, it, yeah, it was pointless and everything, but again, nobody took the course seriously. Now, right the next match, Randy Orton versus CM Punk. The whole thing about CM Punk wanting revenge for Randy Orton taking him out, Unforgiven 2008, after punting him, back, punting him in the head, so Punk was wanting revenge ever since he cost Randy Orton the shot at the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble. They had this match, and the whole time, Randy was knocking out all members of the new Nexus with a punt kick, and they also said, hey, they're not allowed to be at ringside. And Randy got the win with the mid-air RKO. And so far, at this point of the show, this was the best, maybe second best overall match of the night, depending on how you feel about Edge and Del Rio. This was a very, very solid opening or contest right here in the middle of the show. Longest match on the card at this point, third longest overall, but still a very solid match. Now, the next one is where things took a nosedive, and I also believe this would be the worst WrestleMania match ever. Jerry Lawler, Michael Cole, and Jerry Lawler's only WrestleMania match. Whole thing going on because Michael Cole had been a douche of a heel announcer since fall of 2010. Constantly getting on Jerry Lawler's nerves. They finally get a match. and I think it was before WrestleMania where they brought back Grandmaster Sex A to kind of make the feud personnel. And they have this match. It was awful. Stone Cold's referee couldn't even save it. At the end, Jerry Lawler had the tap out victory over Michael Cole with the ankle lock, which... Cole was taken from Jack Swagger. Swagger. But because Stone Cold abuses the power and authority there by getting physical, Michael Cole wins in a dusty DQ reversal finish there by the anonymous Raw GM. That was, yeah, that was the worst match on the show, without a shout about, and still the worst WrestleMania. But I mean, this, outside of the squash, at least on this show, you only had like one dud match on this entire show. If you look back at 11, the Allied Powers tag match was awful. Undertaker, King Kong, Bunny was awful. Brett Backlund was awful. So you had three dud matches on 11. 
In this point, only at 27, you only had one true dud match if you don't include the squash, because I personally don't rate squash matches. Next up, Undertaker versus Triple H, no holds bar match. Undertaker had been gone because he had to get rotator cuff surgery after bragging rights in 2010, losing the buried alive match to Kane. Triple H returned the same night as the Undertaker. No words were spoken, stare down, both to say, hey, let's fight at WrestleMania. No holds barred. Excellent match. I mean, yeah, they kind of overdid it a little bit with the finishers, including Undertaker getting hit with his own tombstone pile driver, but Triple H selling it, like being spooked and JR freaking out and everything commentary, I think kind of helps make up for it. And you even saw an un almost an unprotected chair shot. Undertaker, of course, had to get the hand up, but still a chair shot to the head. Both men got fined for it. And at the end, Undertaker stopped Triple H from using Sledgehammer by locking him in the Hell's Gate. And to the mission, yeah, submission victory. Triple H then, despite losing, was able to walk out on his own power, but Undertaker had to get carted back. And that would end up leading into what happened the next year. But hey, there's at least storytelling there. And again, this was better than the match Undertaker had at 11 against Bundy. Or the only redeeming thing you had was a scoop slam to Bundy at the end. Screw that. Now, a common thing that we see a lot of people complain about is a six-person tag match. John Morrison, Trish Stratus, and Snooki of the Jersey Shore versus Dolph Ziggler and Lay Cool being Layla and Michelle McCool. Only thing I remember from this match is that Snooki did that kind of like big backflip move that China used to do out of the corners. And the face team won, but then this marked the end, beginning of the end for John Morrison's time in WWE because he kind of gave the cold shoulder to Trish Stratus when she went in for like a group hug because he was pissed off that Melina did not get the match and said Snooki got it. And then Morrison just completely fell off a cliff in terms of his booking after this until his departure from WWE, I think it was like November that year. So, I mean, yeah, it wasn't forgettable, forgettable overall celebrity match, but hey. At least it was a little bit better than what we would get for the main event from 11, and I'm also going to compare that to here. This main event. The Miz defending the WWE Championship against John Cena. John Cena got the title shot because he won the Elimination Chamber match the month before to get this title shot. And right before WrestleMania, The Rock made his return to WWE, first time stepping foot in the ring since WrestleMania 20. No, sorry, ever since probably like the summer or fall of 2004. Now remember, he did the Disney Diva stuff with Pi and all that. So it's the first time after seven years... That he's in the ring, cuts that amazing promo. Cena even, I think the raw before this, he hits the fuck you. People say the AA or the FU, I'm calling it the fuck you, I don't care. Hits the fuck you on the rock, and they were teasing a heel turn, even though they eventually scrapped that guy's, oh, damn it, pal, we gotta worry about those merch sales. So he still kept Cena kind of retconning that, but still face versus heel thing there with the Miz. The match was all right at best. Keyword, all right. It's not the worst main event because, yeah, The Miz is complete afterthought because The Rock interfering at the end because this match would go to a double countout finish because The Miz got clothesline over a barricade, smacked his head on the concrete, got concussed, and then The Rock afterwards when it was declared double countout, no, we're going to restart the match, no countout, no disqualification, there must be a winner. Cena knocked The Miz off the onto the apron. I think he was on the apron, like, hit him with a punch. Then The Rock turned, around, turned him around. Rock bottom. Miz got the cover. Win. So it's the first time in 11 years, I believe, where a heel walked out of the main event as a victor. First time since Triple H retained at WrestleMania 16 slash 2000. But then you have to send the crowd home happy, so The Rock does the attacking. So it's like, yeah, The Miz was a complete third wheel in all this. And after the night after, we would see John Cena and The Rock set up their match for 28. But at least nobody's career got ruined in this match. Look again at 11. Bam Bam Bigelow's career was ruined because of that booking of the match. I went into depth with my video review. Whether it's up on YouTube or not, it's going to be hard to say because of what happened with my WrestleMania 19 review. Hint, hint. But at least nobody's career was permanently ruined from this. Because Miz, yeah, he dropped the championship the next month against Cena, but he still became, he was still maintained being a relevant name in the WWE all the way up to present day. And then, yeah, the next night was all about... This was setting up the next night to announce that WrestleMania 28 is going to be Cena versus Rock, but at least you had something to make the crowd go home happy, especially if you were Cena haters and wanted to see The Miz defeat John Cena. But again, nobody's career was ruined compared to when Bam Bam Bigelow lost cleanly to Lawrence Taylor at 11. And plus, the, this match was honestly better than Lawrence Taylor Bigelow because at least it was two guys who have been in the ring long enough to be experienced to... Put a match together, even if it didn't fully click. But again, better than Lawrence Taylor in his one and only match against Bigelow. 
I mean, no disrespect to Bigelow, because, like, he was a veteran at that point. But it's just like having a walk of celebrity through a match one-on-one -on, -one on your own without a, any interference or partners or weapons or anything. That's not easy to do, and it just fell flat. And, hey, at least... Nobody got accosted after WrestleMania 27 for the loss. Oh, you lost to a former MTV star. How dare you? Compared to Bigelow being accosted for losing to a football player. So again, nobody really got 100% buried after this. But anyway, this... I keep hearing so many people say 27 is the worst. I honestly have to disagree when you compare it like to WrestleMania 11. Because again, 11 had so many faults with three dud matches. The main event did not belong... The best match on the card also had a botched finish with Diesel and Shawn Michaels with the way he landed from Shawn Michaels landed from the jackknife, and then a couple other iffy slash forgettable matches. But even with 27, it had more watchable matches overall that I would say are anywhere from good to excellent compared to, to WrestleMania 11. Because again, Edge Del Rio really good, Cody Rhodes Rey Mysterio solid, Brandy Orton CM Punk pretty damn good, Undertaker Triple H excellent match. Four watchable, good to amazing matches on one card here for 27, while 11 honestly only had one. Maybe two-ish if you count the all-right match between Razor Ramon and Jeff Jarrett, even though they had better match Royal Rumble. But again, there's more, at least, quality on this one than you saw with freaking 11. I'm sorry, like, I know people are going to be pissed that I'm not shitting on 27, but again, there's more quality here than what you saw in for WrestleMania 11 back in 95. Especially when you do that comparison. So anyway, let me know what you all thought in the comment section below. Do you think WrestleMania 27 deserves the hate, or do you think it's a little overdone? Because like I said, I honestly believe the hate is a bit too strong. I understand it wasn't the best WrestleMania. We've had if up and down WrestleManias ever since then. But again, it's far from the worst when you look at the make that kind of comparison. So let me know what you all thought in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's episode, please remember to leave a like, subscribe with the bell turned on if you're listening to this on YouTube, or follow if you're listening to this on any other service. And just let me know what you all thought. Like, does 27 deserve the hate that it gets? Or is it not as awful as people say? Again, I'd say it's more of an in-the-road wrestle, middle-of-the-road WrestleMania. But again, it's far from the worst. That's the thing. So thanks for listening, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out, and good day, everybody.